Everybody has to adjust to the fact that there will be a change and there will be a liquidation and there will be uh, living beneath our means. We've lived way beyond our means, but it's what we do about it. If we keep doing the wrong things, it'll last too long. This is already this recession, which uh, is really a depression, is lasting too long. So it, uh, if, if we do this, what we have to preserve is our liberty, because if we do, if we eliminate all our wealth and had our liberties where you just eliminate all those things you just listed here and what our government's going to do, we, we would be back on our feet rather shortly. But that's where the real crisis is. Now, if we don't build our strength on those individuals who know and understand what liberty is all about, we're going to lose our wealth, we're going to further lose our liberty, and all this is going to be available is some guy walking in with a white horse and say, I'm in charge now. If you listen to what I'm going to do, I will deliver you from all the tragedy that exists. And it's not a man on a white horse that's going to save us. It's somebody who understands and gets that 8 or 9% that's necessary to lead us uh, in the ways of uh, a more free society because that's what's counts. So people shouldn't be discouraged and say, oh, this is overwhelming. How are you going to get 51% to give up their benefits? No, you're not going to. But you could get more people in leadership positions, and that's where I think we're making some progress, but we have a tough job ahead because we have to convince the majority of people that they cannot find their answers in more government. Former Congressman Ron Paul is our guest, uh, Institute for Peace and Prosperity.org. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. We've only got a few minutes left. Looking at this, I've brought up the whole issue, and you've brought up the issue of the financial crisis being front and center. But as you mentioned, historically, totalitarianism comes out of a collapse, and then the countries never emerge out of their uh, hellish existence. If we have some of our liberties intact, we can quickly uh, bounce back. But also, war follows that. And we have just extreme examples of funding radicals against Syria, funding radicals against Russia in Crimea, a really aggressive, megalomaniacal, reckless actions by the governing elite. You've been up in Congress for many years. You served the military. Is it just that we know more about it now, so it seems like the government's more out of control, or is the government more out of control? Because it seems like on every front, they're just power grabbing as fast as they can. Texas is grabbing its gold from the Federal Reserve. The Germans want it back. I mean, if you look at what's going on, it looks like they're getting ready for something big. Yeah, and they, they are, and I think the worse things get, the more of this you'll see, uh, because uh, they won't admit the problem. They won't admit that uh, they don't have enough wealth and money to, to bribe everybody and give them benefits, and that's, that's when it's coming to an end. And right now we are, are facing that, and uh, I, I think it is obviously going to be very, very serious. Uh, the, the governments will do what is necessary to maintain their control, but it can come out better. I know what you're talking about, how so often this leads to war. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, many people say, ah, oh, thank goodness for FDR. He uh, had this World War II and got us out of the Depression. What nonsense is that? But we had a revolution, and it's one of the rare things in history, where the people who were involved in the revolution to beat the authoritarians actually ended up with more liberty. But if you look at, uh, you know, what happened after World War I and the, the Depression and Hitler coming in charge and opening up the doors to communism. But the 20th century has proved that fascism and communism, uh, you know, has failed. I think it's more apparent to the world that communism of the Stalin type has failed and nobody's advocating that. But I'm frightened by the people who are carelessly drifting into this well, we need big government, big drug companies, big medicine, everybody in partnerships with the government. And that is, that is where our biggest problem is, and too many people are going along with this because you find that in both political parties. Yes, sir. Uh, in closing, looking at election 2016, uh, Rand Paul in all the early polls and at CPAC uh, year after year and in New Hampshire and other areas was leading but by ignoring him and then the guy behind him, uh, Ted Cruz, they have now basically in new polls focused on Jeb and Trump. And I think Trump clearly will get a bunch of uh, more libertarian uh, support and then drag it away uh, from other candidates and then drop out for Jeb. And then Hillary's uh, campaign head was at Bilderberg uh, in Austria this year. We were there covering it. No one else from, uh, from other candidates. So it looks like she's the one that they're pushing for. 
Uh, is there any way you see in this upcoming election to reach out to the public and explain to them uh, how they're being conned so that we can get uh, a Senator Rand Paul? And I, and I know he's your son, but Ted Cruz supported TPP, and I'm really upset with him about that. Uh, and, and your son, of course, valiantly didn't. And so they're doubling down on money against him, both Republicans and Democrats. I know you don't want to get involved in the election. You want to stay uh, neutral on that. But just as an American watching another sickening spectacle, I mean, imagine President Hillary. Well, it's going to be a disaster, and they're pretty much in charge. And uh, Rand is the alternative to the uh, whole system because he's the only one that's suggesting that we should have a less militaristic uh, foreign policy. Uh, he's been on the right side of challenging the Federal Reserve System, and he's been good on civil liberties. But uh, the establishment is very, very powerful, but, uh, and we have to recognize that. But eventually, though, the only thing that really counts is reaching out and changing people's hearts and minds, and uh, then the political system will reflect those changes. Right now, there are too many Americans who either don't care, don't pay attention, or think these wars are wonderful. But you mentioned the wars that are going on, and that contributes tremendously to our bankruptcy and, tre and tremendously to building enemies around the world. And when we get in worse financial shape, uh, believe me, uh, they're not going to be bashful about coming back at us. So uh, right now, uh, with all the candidates except uh, Rand, uh, they're only going to make things much worse as far as I'm concerned. It must be amazing after all your hard work and success promoting liberty to see your son being the only person out of a field of like 11 candidates who's being called radical just because 50 years ago he'd be called middle of the road. He's just promoting basic, sane Americana ideas, and I hope and pray uh, that we can get him the nomination. But regardless, running, he'll help educate people just like you did to tens of millions, and the young people uh, are waking up as well. Former Congressman Ron Paul, uh, congratulations on your successful TV and uh, radio shows, and great job to your crew down there. Thank you for all your time. Thank you. Good to be with you. Have a great fourth. Wow. Well, what a great uh, present to the InfoWars audience to have Ron Paul, his first live video interview. He's been on with us since 1996, hundreds of times. First time he's been on with us live via video uh, from his amazing studios. Uh, so just so exciting to have him on. Again, I don't get giddy. Uh, when I meet professional football players or basketball players or even movie stars. Uh, and I know some of the biggest movie stars out there. And it's interesting. It's fun, especially if you're a fan of them. But Ron Paul, I mean, that's founding father material right there. That's the real deal. Just a decent, honorable person. And look how good he looks at almost 80, if you're watching via the free feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. I mean, just a blessed man with a whole bunch of grandkids and, you know, standing up, working harder now than he ever did, uh, his mind sharper than ever. And then you compare that to the slobs at the Republican leadership and Democratic leadership that are selling this country out. And Ron Paul speaks every week to packed halls of sometimes 20,000 young people, on average about 5,000. I mean, he's come to Austin and spoke outside when 20,000 people show up. That's the antidote to the young people that don't know what planet they're on. And I want to play again this clip. Mark Dice is up on DrudgeReport.com. Citizens don't know what country we seceded from in 1776. Here it is. What are we celebrating on the 4th of July? Exactly? Our independence. Uh, a little more specific. It's the day that we overtook the South. And it's the day that... Um, it's our independence. It's, that's why we have the fire. From the South. From the South, exactly. So it was the victor of the Civil War? Yes. Fourth of July? Yes. The Declaration of Independence was signed by who? I don't know. That's good. Name one Fast person. forward to the um, last guy. They talked to an Italian guy. He didn't even look like a professor. He's just a hip guy. And he goes, your revolution against Britain, against the colonials. We all love this. The world loved it. Nobody had kicked the British's butt. They'd, they'd beaten everybody. We defeated them. Because it basically was, the colonies were British and German and basically Dutch folks and Irish and others. But the point was, is that they'd been in a bunch of wars and then the British tried to enslave everybody and they said, no way. 
And the whole world marveled at that. And now Americans don't know why you have the fourth. Talk about dummies. But that's a group, and those are the Democrats, and that's who they've got on their side. I guarantee every one of those idiots is a hardcore Obama supporter. They just go with whatever's trendy. They love death panels. They love forced abortion. They love having their prices increased. When Obama says two plus two equals five, he's talking to his morons, his brain-dead zombies. Let's go to that clip. Celebrates the Fourth of July. Is it Independence Day when you got rid uh, rid of uh, Mother England, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we got foreigners. That Only know God. Why we, so, you know, well, uh, the everybody know uh, why we celebrate it more than Americans. Everybody too. loves to get rid of their, like you know, like the the, the, col the colonizer. So it's uh, it's always That's good. That's incredible. <laughs> it's always good. Thanks for knowing that. That's yeah. incredible, man. Have a good one. Have a good vacation. See ya. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Because this is what they do to people in the public schools. They don't let the teachers teach. Don't blame them. This is what they teach. This is what they teach is ignorance. Ah! Dr. Alveda King is part of PriestForLife.org, a bipartisan pro-life group. She, of course, is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King. She's just joining us briefly here today. Appreciate her popping in with us. Um, she's got the new best-selling book, uh, King's Rules, on what Martin Luther King actually said on issues, not what the establishment spins and says he stood for. And I wanted to uh, get her take on what he would think of Black Lives Matters now, uh, basically getting mad at Democratic candidates that say all lives matter. I thought that's what Martin Luther King said, what Common Sense says, storming these events, taking them over, being Democratic Party funded, George Soros funded. What does she think, uh, as, as you know, having a lot of savvy on how politics works, is going on here? And how big a victory is it, because she's a big opponent of, obviously, abortion that predominantly targets blacks, 50-plus uh, percent being aborted before they're born. What does she think about this Planned Parenthood news coming out? I mean, we got four states cutting their funding, Congress looking at it. We've known this is going on for a while, but it really is good to see this evil being exposed. So, uh, Dr. King, thank you so much for coming on with us. I am so glad to join you, and those are some wonderful questions, the things that you pointed out. I, the first thing I thought, and you know I come from a family of preachers, Martin Luther King Jr. is a preacher, my daddy is brother A.D., my granddaddy, Daddy King. Uh, I'm an evangelist. But uh, there was a, a time in the Bible when there was a man named Joseph, and he became very well known to the Pharaoh after he went through persecution and all that. And then when he died, a new pharaoh came. And then they said they didn't remember Joseph. I'm thinking that some people don't even remember Martin King Jr. and what he stood for. And, of course, he stood for God. He was a man of God. He loved God. And a lot of people seem to have forgotten that. And that's why you can see young people running up, interrupting a meeting, yelling Black Lives, Lives Matter, and of course Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. Martin Luther King Jr. often taught, my daddy A.D. is brother too, at 1726, of one blood, God made all people, so we're brothers and sisters. And Martin Luther King says we have to learn to live together as brothers, and all that is sisters will perish as fools. So they don't remember that. And so they don't even know that it's disrespectful to go to a meeting and jump in the people's face and scream, Black Lives Matter. That's disrespectful. But no one has taught them how to articulate a need. And because they don't know how, they're doing it inappropriately. Well, we know the Democrats are directing them and Nancy Pelosi and others. So it looks like they're trying to make the movement balkanize people and look pretty silly as well. They even go to the most liberal uh, Bernie Sanders, you name it, and get in their face. What do you think is really going on behind the scenes here, Dr. King? Well, what does envy and confusion, uh, uh, envy and strife, that's confusion in every evil work. If you can keep things, keep things confused and people can't think, they don't even notice. Well, they're yelling at the Democrats and the Republicans. And then you wonder who's kind of behind the movement, who's paying them. Because I can remember... You know, I was elected to office myself. I was a state legislator two terms in Georgia. I've been a presidential appointee and those kinds of things. And so when you're in a campaign, you pay people to stand on the corner with your signs, to walk up and down and pass out your flyers. Well, people don't only do that when someone's running for office. They do it to, to disturb a community. And so you can give somebody a little money and say, go out into the community and scream and jump up and down, and we'll give you some money, we'll give you lunch, we'll give you whatever. So a lot of that is happening. 
And then uh, sometimes young people especially, they'll see something.